O, właśnie, to prosiliście, żebym obejrzał wczoraj, ale ostatecznie przerzuciłem to na dzisiaj, bo mi się nie chciało. Nowe sekrety znalezione w trailerze Story Elden Ringa. Kto by się spodziewał? W pierwszym trailerze już jakieś sekrety były, znaczy sekrety, no wiecie, no, i to są tak naprawdę rzeczy, które po prostu znaleziono nieco później, a nie jakieś wielkie sekrety. Także zerknijmy na to, odpalmy sobie jakieś pseudo napisy dla tych, którzy angielskiego w 100% nie ogarniają, może będzie to przydatne i zobaczmy, co Zajo Storm ma do powiedzenia. Ja jestem bardzo ciekawy, bo trailer Story był mega dobry. Alright, what's going on, guys? It has been about a week since we got the Elden Ring DLC story trailer and during that time the community has been on fire trying to break down everything. Ja jestem popierdzielony już w tym momencie za każdym razem jak idę spać to sprawdzam Reddita czy coś nie wyskoczyło nowego, nie? I oczywiście nic się nie dzieje. Jestem w szoku, bo ponoć był playtest dla content creatorów, mogli zagrać w mały segment tej gry. Normalnie już ludzie niektórzy w to grali i testowali i nikt się nie odzywa, żadnych kurde przecieków, nie wiem co się dzieje. And find every Aż dziwne, że tak dobrze trzymają te info. NDA? Wiesz, NDA to NDA. Na prawie wszystko, co wyciekło, jest NDA. <laughs> only in the trailer itself, but also through many of the marketing materials that were shared alongside it, which give us a bit of a closer look at characters or parts of the world, which in turn lead to new ways to analyze what we saw in the trailer. So today we're going to discuss many of these findings, break them down, in order to get a better understanding of Shadow of the Erd Tree. So as we begin today, if you want to stay up to date on all things Elden Ring DLC yeah, and enjoy the lore and discussion, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and now let's get into it. To begin today, let's start off by talking about this character here, the supposed leader of our band of Mikkel who appears to not only be the narrator of the trailer, but also our guide into the land of shadow. As in the last video, we discussed how almost certainly she is the person we'll meet in Moog's arena that will tell us how to access the DLC and some further. A to jest ciekawe. To jest, ja w to trochę nie wierzę, powiem szczerze. Nie, nie wydaje mi się, żeby to była ta sama osoba. Evidence to support that claim has come out thanks to the image that we got a few days ago shared by the official Elden Ring Twitter account. And we have confirmed that she is that same character we've seen consistently. But one thing you likely missed when taking a look at this character's no. design is actually her belt. At first glance, it might not appear to be anything significant. Mm, However, no, many of you pointed out to me that the design is eerily similar uh -huh. to the ring on the withered arm in the cocoon racja. in Moog's arena. Supposedly... Jakie to jest niesamowite, jak oni dbają o szczegóły tych postaci, jak ja to kocham, jak to wszystko podpowiada i się łączy ze sobą. To jest piękne. Mikola's arm. Now, Kocham obviously, to. they're not one to one. It's not a perfect match, but there's enough of an overlap in the style to where there is a connection there. And Jakie to wszystko jest spójne ze sobą, no? Bo mógłbyś o to nie dbać tak naprawdę. Mógłbyś mieć wywalone. Zróbmy fantastyczny design w miarę fajny i tyle. Ale oni to wszystko starają się przeplatać ze sobą, żeby to nawet w tych najmniejszych szczegółach, które nie będzie tyle ludzi na nie zwracało uwagi, ale jednak ci, którzy zwrócą, to dalej będą zadowoleni, nie? Obviously, because she's searching for Mikola. Her entire design is inspired by Mikola. So the question we need to ask... No, Miyazaki jest nerdem pod tym względem. Bardzo dużym. Ale mega mnie to cieszy, że wolą faktycznie to mega spójnie zrobić, niż na odwal się. Bo coraz więcej firm miałoby to gdzieś i po prostu leciało. O, fantastyczny design i siemanko. From this is what does that entire design is inspired by Mikola. So the question we need to ask from this is what does that ring represent? At the moment I don't think we have enough evidence for a clear answer, but I'm sure that will come up throughout the DLC. Rings in Elden Ring have a mysterious power. We see at the beginning of the game, Melina finds our body and places a ring on our finger before we awaken. Our fate with Rani is bound by the Dark Moon Ring, which allows us to complete the quest, summoning her to enact her destiny at the end of the game. So perhaps it's this latent power in Mikola's ring that allows us to travel to the Land of Shadow, or this ring could. Przeżę, tak może być. To brzmi mega dobrze be an object that this character is seeking out in hopes of becoming Mikola's consort. After all, we know Mikola is waiting for a promised lord. Keeping on topic with the appearance of this character, a lot of you may remember back in the day, the Elden Ring closed network test. During that network test, there were limited starting classes, and you were unable to actually customize your character. Every starting class came with a male and female counterpart with pre-designated character appearances. Uh -huh. But the Enchanted Knight starting class was one of the most popular, and the female Enchanted Knight had a very distinct look. She had light blonde hair with some pretty colorless eyes and dynamic eyeshadow. And Sekiro Doobie pointed out that this looks 
really similar to the face of this new NPC. We can see they have the same hairstyle that is the same color, very similar eyeshadow, although their eye color does look a little bit different. Now it is possible that it's entirely a coincidence given the limited number of customization options, but if this was an early prototype of this NPC, that would make a lot of sense, even down to them being an enchanted... Yes, but the beans for it is a little bit down, I'm feeling. Night. Now, first off, both characters have armor underneath robes, but at a more technical level, miracles related to Mikola are not purely faith. For example, the triple rings of light and Radagon's ring of light require an equal amount of faith and intelligence. But we can tie the Karian knights directly to Mikola. The Mikolan knight sword reads, Sword forged by servants of Mikola of the Halic Tree, so with the design modeled after those carried by the Karian knights. Instead of a to jest ciekawe, że on ma związek z Karianami, bo z drugiej strony była walka karyjskich z, ze złotym porządkiem, który reprezentował Radagon, dla którego Mikela również tworzył rzeczy takie jak właśnie te złote dyski. Także tak naprawdę wynalazki Mikeli trafiały do obu stron konfliktu, do całego świata. Instead of Glintstone, however, Amber from the Halig Tree is embedded in the blade. Not to mention Loretta, a knight of the Halig Tree, primarily wields Karian sorceries. But what may actually seal the deal on this being an early version of this NPC is the 1.0 description of Loretta's helmet. The old description read, Silver Helm of the Arbor Sentinels who served the sacred tree of Mikola, the Scion Empyrean. Features a huge circular wood crest. Hailing from Rhea Lucaria, these enchanted knights once belonged to the Karian royal enchanted family, knight, but were no. later gifted to Mikola, recipient of the vision by King Consort Radagon. So I don't think the name of this class being enchanted knight is any kind of coincidence. And the female enchanted knight from the network test, looking almost exactly like this new servant of Mikola, is a little bit. Czy tak może być, bo z tego co wiem, to były case, w których Miyazaki robił coś początkowo w jakimś właśnie teście czy coś gry, a potem nie trafiło coś do oficjalnej wersji. Trochę się to zmieniło w stosunku do premiery i ten cut content trafił gdzieś później do gry na przykład, albo został w jakiś sposób zreusowany, wymieszany z jakąś nową treścią. Two on the nose for me. So when we finally meet this NPC in the DLC, I wonder if that face is going to be exactly the same, or we'll find out. To będzie właśnie główne potwierdzenie, nie? Czy czy ten NPC będzie miał właśnie taki wygląd jak ten Enchanted Knight? Zobaczymy. Lord, that she used to be a Karian Knight that ended up swearing allegiance to Mikola. If I had to guess what happened, I think from software designed this character back then with their role as this NPC in mind, but decided to use their character model for the Enchanted Knight class in the network. Knowing that they ultimately wouldn't be in the version of the game that releases to the public. Jeżeli tak faktycznie jest i oni ten design jako tego NPC i jej rolę mieli przewidzianą już wtedy, to ja jestem w ciężkim szoku. Ale podobno tak było, że na DLC zaczęto pracować już po premierze Eldena, nie? So what do you think? Coincidence or not? There are a lot of things back in the CNT and 1.0 version of the game that can very easily be tied as references to the DLC, but that's a whole rabbit hole we're not going to go down right now. Let's shift gears a bit and talk uh -huh. about Mikola and the quote that says he divested himself of his fate. When this quote hits, it shows a picture Trina. of Saint Trina matching mm -hmm. almost identically with a nascent butterfly. Oh, kurde, tego nie zauważyłem. <laughs> Jezus, ta symbolika. And the Trina's Lily. The trailer heavily implies that Saint Trina was Mikola's fate, but there's a much more direct example of Mikola's fate that also needs to be considered in this context. If you've done Celibus's quest, he will have sent you to a strange location in the Altus Plateau, a little enclave with a very... A to jest ten, uh, ukryta miejscówka świętej Triny, nie? Interesting statue. Lots of land octopi and sacrificial twigs. But the statue here is a statue of Mikola and Malay. And the item that Celibus tasks you with retrieving is the Amber Starlight. The Amber Starlight item description reads, an ephemeral sliver that robić, gives off a pale Dzisiaj amber pewnie. glow, what remains of a passing flash of starlight. If the stars command our fates, then amber-hued stars must command the fates of the gods. Such is the belief that inspired the use of these shards to prepare a most special draught, cannot be consumed by mere humans. And when you give it to Celibus, this is what he has to say. Then I'd like you to procure something. Uh -huh. A rather unique starlight shard that glistens with amber. With that, my special draft will gleam with nectar sweetness, and even a demigod would be slave to its charms. Widzisz, bo zawsze się mówiło, że nikt nie ulegnie jakby wdziękowi Mikeli czy coś takiego, że on potrafi otumanić ludzi totalnie. To think this was once a demigod's very fate. My, oh my, oh my. 
że każdy ingredient So when we find this amber starlight under the statue of Mikola, we are literally finding a remnant of the faith that Mikola divested himself of. But how this connects with the instance in the story trailer is that although this location is now unnamed, once upon a time in development, it was known as St. Trina's Hideaway. So perhaps that answers our question of why we have to kill Radon in order to access the DLC, since part of Mikola's fate is tied to those so-called Amber Stars. But of course there may be much more to the picture than that, and to what full extent St. Trina is tied to that fate, well we'll just have to wait and see. No i teraz zaczynam powoli rozumieć, czemu Radon może być potrzebny, nie? Do tego wszystkiego, żeby wejść do DLC. Speaking of stars, one of the earliest shots in the trailer is Merica holding up these strands in the shape of a rune and being blasted by this sudden gust of wind or power. Now for the purposes of a trailer in visual communication, it could just be symbolism, but I wonder if there's more to this sudden blast of wind. And there may be an answer to that. If we listen to the music that plays during this scene, it is the score of the Elden Beast. And what do we know about the Elden Beast? Well, according to the Elden Star's item description, long ago, the greater will sent down a golden meteorite containing within it the Elden Beast that would eventually go on to be the vassal of the Greater Will, inhabiting the body of Merica and Radagon. So what if what we're looking at here, this sudden blast of wind, is the Elden Beast arriving on its meteorite during the creation of the Erd Tree? Because based on the cutscene of the Elden Beast fight, it appears that the Elden Beast and the creation of the Golden Erd Trees are inherently tied. And perhaps the seduction mentioned in the trailer during this scene is the seduction of the greater will enticing Merica to accept its vassal. But the opening scene of the story trailer depicts Merica walking up this staircase among all this gore and standing beneath this massive archway of bodies. And in my breakdown I explain no, that to mówiliśmy, że to może być początek drzewa, nie? Nie zła Ameryka, co Ameryka? A, napisy, tak? Nie wiem. Mówię, te napisy są śmieszne. Ja tam się nie skupiam, bo with the primary są. reasoning behind that being that when we explore the earth tree roots, bodies given earth tree burial become the tree it's O tym mówiłem, no. Self. They quite literally turn into tree roots, but some more convincing evidence may be even more obvious by just simply looking at the front of the Erd Tree. Where we see that great divide in the trailer, we also see this division in the Erd Tree itself, with the gold separated in the middle and a normal tree underneath. And I've often wondered, well, what causes this separation? And the answer might simply be that it's a scar left over from its creation, and that split in the middle that we see here is reflected in the final version. Anyways, so guys, that is gonna do it for the video. Fajny materiał. No co? Nic tylko czekać. Ile zostało? Trzy tygodnie? Jezus Maria, nie wytrzymam zaraz. Trzy tygodnie. Boże święty.